On this episode we're gonna rebuild a BMW R100 engine and I will show you how I clean the engine, how I take everything apart and how I prep everything for Cerakote and also for paint and all the special tools that you need along the way to rebuild back up the engine to eventually get an engine looking like this and all sorts of tips and tricks along the way. So this engine is from a RT version from 1979, which means that it's a earlier model, but overall it's in pretty good shape, no major leaks of that kind, and also the mileage isn't that high. Um, but before we can strip the engine apart, it's time to clean everything. For cleaning I got quite a lot of questions on my other videos uh, as well, but um, yeah, this is what I use uh, at least for now when the engine is all assembled. So I take a brush, I put it inside a the drill and then um, this is just regular fuel and then first I'll spray it in like so and then let it soak in for a little bit and then I go over it with a brush like so and then finally um, I do another rinse with the fuel and then actually it takes out uh, the majority of the grime let's go yeah, by the way, a tray like this is also very uh, useful. Uh, and this is actually from a washing machine. So I started at the back of the engine to get all the clutch dust and the uh, oil off of it. I did an initial clean with the fuel and after that I took the brush out on the drill to work my way up. And then I did another clean with the fuel and as you can see it already come pouring off. And also on the sides it really cleaned up beautifully. After that it was time to take off the, the clutch pack and also taking off the flywheel. Here's a little clip uh, from the future. Um, I forgot to mention that before you take off the, the clutch pack and the flywheel on the back of the engine, um, you have to make sure you take off uh, the cover first and then um, you can place a small M6 bolt. It's like length 12 or 15 um, and which you can place here. Uh, inside the rotor and then you uh, fit the cover on like so. So the engine cover here in the front um, actually has a little gap here at the bottom so then you know that the little allen bolt is coming against the cover right here so you have that constant pressure pressing the, the crank to the back of the engine. So you have the washer right here um, actually from this point of view it's kind of hard to see but uh, the same from the back of the engine. So you have the pin right here and there and on this side of the, the crank it retains the clip around here and it's the same for the other side but um, by having the constant pressure from the front of the engine um, you prevent that the, the washer will fall off on the other side of the engine and when it does you have to take out the crank to replace it back on the location pins. The initial clean is now done so uh, with the fuel and the brush took most of the grime off. As far as the back of the engine goes I took off the, the clutch pack and also the flywheel and also already cleaned it um, because I will uh, replace the seal and also cleaned it around here because I want to replace the o-ring that's behind the cover uh, for the oil pump. Um, so I'll do a little bit more cleaning on that side but uh, around here everything is nice and clean so I can start uh, taking off the valve cover, the head and then uh, the cylinder. So I start by taking out the spark plug and after that uh, get the valve cover off. So the next step is uh, releasing the pressure from the nut that retain the rockers. So you take it off in a crossway pattern just to uh, release the pressure all evenly. And after that uh, you really need to uh, tag everything so all the rockers from left to right. but We'll get back to that. Um, after that it's time to um, take the heads off. So after that uh, we can get the cylinder off. So just make sure you go gentle taps on the cooling fins so you don't want to break or bend the cooling fins on the cylinder. It's time to take off the head gasket so we can start by taking off the cylinder. So we're sliding just a little bit forward so we gain access to the retaining clip. So we take that off and then after that we can push out the, the gungeon pin. So just make sure that you um, support the, the rod so otherwise it will fall on the inside of the piston. 
and after that we can slide just the cylinder just a little bit forward and then again just make sure that the rod doesn't uh, come smashing down so just uh, lay it down gently on the side of the engine case and when taking the cylinder off just make sure that the threads won't damage the side of the piston. As far as the engine goes I will now uh, turn it 90 degrees so I can take off the oil pan. Now that uh, the oil pan has been taken off I'll let the engine sit for the night so um, the next morning I know that all the oil, oil from the engine has been dripped down on the cloth so um, it's nice and empty tomorrow. Now the clutch pack uh, has been taken off with the flywheel I feel confident to remove the front cover so right now the uh, the engine won't rotate so I know the washer will sit where it is right now. So um, yeah, I have to start cleaning everything before I can start uh, blasting it. For cleaning nothing major fancy, it's just a 20 liter uh, barrel which is filled with fuel. So when working with uh, fuel like that uh, make sure the doors are opened like so and wear one of these. So I did an initial clean uh, with this cylinder head in the, in the fuel and you can already tell some difference but uh, now I'll prepare it for the ultrasonic cleaner. So this is the ultrasonic cleaner that I have, it's a 45 liter so it's uh, pretty big and right now it's almost up to temp to uh, put the heads in. Oh, and by the way this is the stuff that I add into the water for the ultrasonic cleaner. So both cylinders are now ready for uh, blasting. Um, what I did is I uh, assembled everything and I put pieces of cloth inside uh, the exhaust and also here on the inlet to prevent blasting media from entering uh, in the cylinder ports. And then um, on this side I also put in the, the spark plug which you know, will be changed eventually. And also here on the back end I made small pieces of cloth. With I, which I pried in with a screwdriver to make sure that no blasting media will entering through the cylinder into the cylinder head. So normally this is where um, also the oil enters the cylinder head. Um, and same I did for the, the push rods. So and also did some extra duct tape around that as well. So right now with everything blocked off and taped off, it's time for blasting. Always satisfying to look at the blasting process. So for uh, blasting I'm using aluminum oxide so that's uh, actually recommended for Cerakote. Um, so no glass beads on that, just aluminum oxide. So the engine is now fully cleaned and uh, ready to be masked up and um, ready for Cerakote. Um, so I want to tell us something on how do I clean it just the way that it is right now. So I use a piece of Scotch-Brite and to make life a little bit easier I spray some fuel on it. So um, when going down on the engine block it uh, helps with a little bit less friction so it makes it a little bit easier to clean. And it also prevents um, getting dust from the Scotch-Brite pad itself. Um, and for the tight corners you use a little brass brush. So like this, so you can go in the tight corners from the engine case and then um, eventually when I'm all done I get a clean cloth and then spray some fuel on it and to wipe it all down and to make sure that it is as clean as it is right now. So um, right now it's uh, time to order parts. I get quite a lot of questions on where do I order my parts but uh, first of all you need to look up all the correct part numbers for um, the parts that you want to replace. So for that I go to uh, my uh, the page that I use is realoom.com slash bmw well you can see the address right here and then I go to this selection box uh, right here so you can enter the serial number of the bike that you're looking up so then I select the bike like so and then I go to search there's a quite a lot of uh, advertisement on this page so you have to ignore that um, but you can look up all the parts 
um, for classic bikes, so the R R100, the R80, the K75, the K100, etc. And also for the current bikes, so the GSs, the new GSs. Um, but I, right now I'm looking for a classic R100 RT from Europe and it's from the beginning of 1979. So um, then you can browse parts. Browse parts. Come on. Yes, finally. So now you see all the, the main groups uh, of the bike. So you have the engine, engine electrical system, fuel system, etc. So um, if you want to order parts for the engine, then you can select that and ignore this. And then you go down. And for instance, if you want to order uh, for the cylinder, the O-ring, then you can tap on that. So you get the next diagram and it's right here. So it's number five right now. And then you can scroll down. So you see the O-ring and you can also see the dimensions of the O-ring and also a kind of reminder. Uh, so the quantity now is two. That's because you need two for one bike. So then you can select the original part number and then you can um, copy it. So now it's time to order the parts and for all my R100 and R80 parts, I go to the hobbyist. So that's my go-to site. Uh, they can ship it worldwide. So um, here in the top right corner, I'll paste the part number that I'm looking for and then I'll select search. So then it, I get a hit for the O-ring and yet again, you can also see the dimensions of the O-ring and also from the, the building gear that I'm looking up and the original part number and all the parts have a photo of it. This will help also. So you can also see the total stock that I have, the price, and then you can order two. So you can add that to your shopping cart and then you can go back if you want also to order um, the push rod seals. So then again, it's also a kind of reminder to order four because you need two for each cylinder. So then you can go down to all the parts that you want to have just one by one and fill up your shopping cart and that's all done. So all the parts are now unpacked and uh, I will go through it. Um, first of all, a totally new uh, clutch pack. So these four boxes will be the new clutch pack and also uh, new bolts for the flywheel and also new bolts for the clutch plate so you have to change the those every time you loosen them so don't forget that and also here in this box it's a new uh, starter so i can definitely advise that to go for a new starter since the old starter is also 40 plus years old so you can definitely benefit from that um over here a new bolt for the rotor since the old one is uh, pretty messed up uh, on the head so the allen bolt right now is fresh um, some o-rings for the uh, like we talked to on the, when we ordered the part so two of those and um, this is I don't know I have to look it up based on the part number so this is also quite convenient they mentioned the part number um, from the hobbyist itself so if you are in doubt where to go so then you can type in this number and then it will hit the part that you ordered um, so over here new bearings for the swing arm and also the the caps for those and also a, a seal for the the front where the rotor uh, is on new gaskets new oil filter new spark plugs new head gasket and in here is a um, o-ring um, so the seal for the back of the crank New retaining clips, also more gaskets, and this one will go on the oil pump, and I have to look that one up. Um, so new uh, grommets for the electrical part on the top of the bike, and some stainless goodies. So um, he wanted to go with new push rod tubes, so these are stainless, and also um, four new um, nuts and also the washer so these will be used for tightening up the head on the cylinder and also two new um, 
yeah, caps, nuts for the, uh, tightening up the valve cover on the head. So overall the stainless will uh, look great. So now that everything is clean, it's time to change um, the seal right here and also uh, the o-ring that's behind here so that's for the oil pump so i already marked it with an arrow so i know it will go back in the right orientation um, and for that i got a new ring and also um, for the seal i got a new one and for that you need one of these so i clean the cover all up so it's out with the old and in with the new make sure you put a little bit of oil on the o-ring before you put it back so the new seal is now in just just a little bit and, and I used a strap just to prevent that uh, the crank will go forward. So now it's time to use this uh, special tool. So I actually place it on the uh, crank and then I'll use the new balls to gently guide in the seal just all the way around, just even, just bit by bit. So the seal is now in and um, by using this tool you also get the right depth and also it's nice and even all the way around so now the seal is mounted up we can start uh, by reassembling the flywheel but first we need to change the o-ring that's inside the flywheel so i think this uh, is easily forgotten because it isn't really noticeable um, but i ordered a new one so now it's time to change that one and uh, make sure you also put a little bit uh, of oil around the o-ring before you put it back on the flywheel is now on I just tighten the bolts hand tight so we still have to torque it according to spec so the manual states that it has to go to 100 newton meters but um and it isn't necessary to go in stages but I, li I like to go to 30 60 and the last one to 100 so for torquing the flywheel down i need to keep the flywheel in its position and by that i using this uh metal strip um, but since it's just a little bit too short i placed a little socket around here um, to help it uh, stay in place so now i only need to torque it down to 100 newton meters And that the flywheel is on I can take off the, the rotor and for that I need to take off this bolt right here. Um, unfortunately the bolt isn't perfect anymore so with a little bit of luck I can get it out with my impact gun with this uh, combination. So luckily the bolt came out uh, without any problems, uh, kind of surprised by that also. But now I can take off the rotor and for that you need this special bolt. And for this I recommend just to use a uh, regular wrench, just like that. So you can add on the pressure just evenly and smoothly. Just like so. Also with the timing chain cover, just take your time with the hammer, just don't go too hard, just go uh, bit by bit and afterwards when it's off it's time to also give the, the last pieces a blast in the blasting cabinet so we can start with uh, paint and Cerakote. It's time to mount up the new clutch pack, um, but first you need to degrease everything because from factory they put all grease on just to prevent it from rusting over so you want to make sure everything is degreased properly for everything so we can mount everything back up everything is now degreased and ready to be mounted back on the engine um, as i said earlier you need new bolts because they're one time use only um, but since um, right here i can show you um, the clutch need to be preloaded because otherwise you can't mount up the clutch to the flywheel so therefore I got longer bolts so then you can preload the clutch on the flywheel and then you can mount up three shorter bolts and then you can take them out one by one so you know that everything will be secured so let's preload the clutch so the clutch is now preloaded with the three longer bolts so now I can put in the three balls that need to be in the clutch. 
clutch is now fully mounted and I'll talk to spec. Um, for aligning the clutch plate, you need one of these. So back there, there is a center and which you can put in the point. So that's the backing plate behind the, the clutch plate. So when you press this one in, so then you know the clutch plate is all centered. So job done. So I said earlier, we're gonna change the push rod tubes for these uh, stainless steel ones. Um, so you actually need a special tool like this. So you can place it on right here, so inside the tube. And then uh, you need a little bit of heat around here for the cylinder. So it's nice and warm and then you can tap it out. So by just adding just a little bit heat, it makes life just a little bit easier. So you don't want to damage the cylinder. So as you can see, it's almost 90 degrees. So then uh, put in the drift and just uh, a couple of taps and uh, the pusher tubes come uh, flying out. So for prepping all the parts for paint and center coat, I will always put them in a bucket which is filled with uh, acetone. So I let it soak in for a couple of hours and then obviously also turn around the parts and do another soak. So I'm sure that everything is nice and degrees before I start with the masking off and uh, prep everything for paint. So the cylinder and the cylinder head, uh, I will spray them in Cerakote. As you can see, it's all masked up. So I choose to go with Cerakote because uh, the temperature for the cylinder and the cylinder heads are too high for the 2K paint. So uh, that's why I go with the, the Cerakote. So as you can see, just build up just uh, the layers, just evenly all around. And then uh, after the cylinder, it's time for, uh, for the cylinder head. And because the cooling fins are just a, a little bit longer, you really have to build it up in layers. So uh, don't rush it. Again, just take your time and uh, build up the layers just evenly until you get a good coverage all around. After spraying the cylinder and cylinder heads, I let them cure for a week or so. So um, the masking job was pretty good. So no overspray on the inside and good coverage all around. Um, also on the cylinder, so pretty good. So right now it's time to uh, put the new stainless steel push rod tubes in. Before installing, I will heat the cylinder up. I put it in the oven to uh, 150 degrees. And when it's out of the oven, I'll place it on the two wooden pieces like so. And then I'll put in the new push rod tube. Then I'll take the drive, and then I'll put it in, and then it's hammer time. Also a good tip is to put some engine oil on the top of the push rod tube before you put it in to help it lubricate a little bit more. When tapping in the new push rod tube, just uh, let it find its own way, so don't force it, otherwise it uh, can damage the inside of the cylinder and just uh, check your work every now and then until you hit uh, the correct depth. The engine parts are now ready for paint. I taped it all off. Um, so these parts didn't need any taping up to do, but um, for this, I taped off the inside of the, the oil cap. And here I put it in a sort of crayon to prevent any paint for uh, on the insides and same for these so there won't be any paint inside the threads um, for the um, valve covers so make sure you go just nice along the lines so the outcome will be perfect same for here for the timing cover and for this cover right here I'll first tape it off on the inside so there won't be any paint coming inside and same with it on these sides on the openings so there will be um, all aluminum while it's done so that will give a nice contrast so now that it's uh, done let's continue on the engine yeah and the oil pan you probably missed it already I already painted it and I will tell you why in a moment now that the clutch pack has been taped up it's time to cut off the excess tape so I'll rather just go just a little bit more inwards so then you'll have a uh, black line between the gearbox and the engine. So when you just cut uh, just uh, along the line of the engine case, 
it will sort of have a white line in between so just by going this route it will just blend in just a little bit better so that's all done on the back of the engine and then uh, the same recipe for the front of the engine is also just cut just a little bit more inwards so the timing chain cover just will uh, fall over it and then it's all black the holes for the pushrod tube seals I taped them all off from the inside as you see here on the left and then eventually on the right side as you can see I fold it all inwards until you get a nice sharp line all the way around the whole engine is now taped up and ready for paint uh, noteworthy is that on top of the engine where the starter motor will be um, that you have to tape that one off because otherwise you get uh, problems with the grounding of the starter motor then it won't run uh, correctly or run at all so just make sure you tape that part off I want to tell you something why I painted the oil pan uh, before so that I did because right now the engine can sit on its own without using the engine stand so normally these uprights are in the way to get a good coverage all around so that's why I painted the oil pan before and I already taped it off so I can paint the engine no problem and then I can take off all the tape and then it's all good to go to get installed but um, before painting I want to tell you something a little bit about the paint because I got loads of questions about what paint I use for my engines so this is what I use for my bike engines brand is called Salem Mix it's a 2k DTM which stands for direct to metal so you don't need any primer or anything on it just uh, clean everything just as I uh, showed you earlier and then it's a, a spray-on solution it's time to mix up the paint um, I'm using these cups so I'm using this scale so the 4 to 1 1 ratio then I know that everything will be in the right amount and for uh, spraying I'm using this in the Vilbus Pro it's a detail gun so not a large cup but it will do for uh, the stuff that I'll paint and also got a pressure gauge at the bottom of my paint gun so I exactly know what kind of pressure I run so after spending all that hours on taking everything apart cleaning it blasting it cleaning it again and masking everything up it's time to lay down the paint so you don't want to rust this part otherwise you have to do it all over again so just build it up layer by layer and just go a little bit thicker with every pass that you go um, same goes on the engine just go a light coat and then when it's all sticky you have done the first pass you can go just a little bit thicker on every pass that you made until everything has a nice even black coat all the way around Everything is now painted and it's all cured. Now it's time to unwrap everything. Before starting uh, assembling the engine, I'm gonna sand uh, the BMW lettering down. So it's uh, aluminum color and also on the side of the these cooling fins, I will sand down on both sides. And also uh, for this valve cover, I will sand the top lines down, these two. So for the starter motor cover I first uh, mask it up with uh, masking tape just the regular stuff and after that I use some um, duct tape um, to pr protect the mounting points so this is just like a high spot so it, you will easy um, touch it with the sanding paper so then you need to repaint that so that's why I put on um, double duct tape on that for the valve cover I also did uh, first uh, this regular masking tape and then some duct tape so then I will sand these lines down to get a nice brushed finish and also um, for this side cover right here I taped off this part right here and also the ends and obviously here on top side so now sand it down
For sanding the lines down I'm using 320 grit sanding paper uh, in my opinion that will give the, the best texture and look to it. So all the lines are now sanded down on the, the covers so on this uh, valve cover see nice sharp lines all the way through and also on the timing chain cover all nice and tidy all uh, around and also on the starter motor cover with the BMW lettering. Just perfect. Now it's time to lay all the parts like so. But there's still more prep work to do. Got the right side of the engine all uh, prepped up for uh, assembling the cylinder and the cylinder heads etc. So I want to show you what I've done so far. So um, before putting in uh, the stud bolts for the cylinder and cylinder heads I cleaned the threads on the inside by using q-tips so as I can show you right here um, especially on the top corner you see right here a small hole and that's actually the outlet from the oil pump so the oil will be pumped up and then it will go up and then it will run along the stud bolt going to the cylinder head and then eventually it will come out uh, the rocker and then it will lubricate the cylinder head so make sure the threads are nice and clean before you install the stud bolt and also before disassembling the engine I measured uh, the thread that was exposed here on the top side so when putting the stud bolt back I knew that it will go back in the, the right position also here on the right side I took out both cam followers and then I cleaned them and I used a little bit of engine oil and I looped them back up and then I put them back in so that's also done so for the right cylinder I uh, looped up the new push rod tube seals so on the inside and outside um, so that's all good to go and make sure as you can see right here that um, this line will need to point downwards so make sure you go for the right orientation on that and also I already put back this seal this o-ring right here and I also put a little bit of engine oil on it so uh, it won't tear when uh, installing it and same goes for the, the top two small o-rings here and here so I put a little bit of oil on it so to prevent them from falling out when installing the cylinder back on the engine so before installing the piston in the cylinder um, I use a tiny brush like this so I put some engine oil on it and I lubricate it all around for all the piston rings so now that's nice and lubricated and also I'll put some engine oil on the bottom side of that piston and obviously also for the inside of the cylinder and then I put on the, the piston rings in the right orientation which I'll come back to in a second and then when they're um, done and set to the right orientation I actually use this right here so this is a piston ring compressor so you put the piston in like so and then you can wind it down by using this allen bolt right here so actually then you install the piston from the back side of the cylinder so that's the best and easiest way so i'll show you that right now so for the piston ring orientation uh from top to bottom uh the top one I'll place it in like a 6 to 7 o'clock position so 6.30 ish um, the second one I'll go sorry right here I'll place it in a uh, 1.30 position and then for the bottom side I'll put it in a 10 to 11 o'clock so 10.30 position so right now I can put the piston inside the piston ring compressor and also a top tip is also to lubricate the inside of the compressor when using the piston ring compressor just make sure that you don't mix up the orientation of the piston rings when you turn it down and then use the end of the hammer just to tap out the piston just a little bit out of the compressor so you then can easily tap it inside the cylinder now that the piston is inside the cylinder um, the new push rod tube seals are on the o-ring is on and also the two small ones are on it's now to put on some um, silicone sealant so this is what I use um, 
This is also the stuff that BMW uh, recommends for putting on. So I take a small brush again and then I put just a small amount around the base of the cylinder and uh, just make sure that on the top of the cylinder you uh, don't go too much um, otherwise you'll block the oil passage coming from the top so then it's finally time to put the cylinder on the engine just make sure you loop everything up from the gun pin to the inside of the connecting rod to the inside of the piston and then put in the gunship pin in the same direction that you get it out and then um, make sure that the retaining clip for the gunship pin really snaps into place so you really want to hear that and then you know that you secured it nicely so the cylinder is now on um, so best to double check again so that the arrow is pointing towards the exhaust side um, so right right and also here so the right cylinder for the exhaust and the right cylinder for the intake and the right cylinder head so now it's time to put it on but before that installing the gasket and the push rod tubes the head gasket can only be mounted up in one way so no problem regarding that and after that it's time to put on the cylinder head and then I always finger tie them on the, the top and the bottom stud so it won't wiggle on the cylinder. And then I put in the push rod tubes and before I install them I just put this, uh, a little bit of engine oil on them. And then it's time to install the, the rockers. So, so the head is now mounted up on the cylinder and there is still um, a gap between the cylinder and the engine. And that's because the new push rod tubes in. But... Uh, once we torque these down, it will all slide into place. And before that, um, you have to torque it to the right settings and following. So uh, this is actually the order in which you uh, torque it to this Newton meter phases. So then you go for 15 Newton meters, 10 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then you uh, go up to 25 Newton meters again to 35 again etc etc so now that the cylinder head is on it's time to set the valves but before setting the valves it's um, necessary to put kind of hard to see but uh, there we go it's um, crucial to set the OT mark in the window right here just in line so you know that's in top that center so it needs to be in top that center for setting the valves so for setting the valves you need these basic tools so two wrenches size 12 uh, feeler gates so 0.20 for the exhaust and 0.10 for the inlet and also a torque wrench because eventually you have to torque this one down to 20 newton meters. For setting the valves, now for instance uh, on the exhaust side, you take the feeler gauge 0.2 and then you go, you want to feel just a slight uh, resistance between the feeler gauge, the rocker and the valve. So it's just going back and forth, change it, feel it. And as long as you're not satisfied, just change it again, just as long as you're satisfied with the result. And then um, it's a matter of tightening it all down and then uh, check it again because it's easily changed by um, tightening this uh, lock nut down. So then it's check again and then actually I make a full rotation and then I'll check again and eventually I'll tightening it all down um, to 20 newton meters as I said earlier so it's uh, critical for setting the uh, valves because um, when you're off it's hard to start the bike especially when it's cold and it can make uh, rattling noises and also a loss of power so just just make sure take your time that everything is uh, spot on Always a good moment when the engine is coming together. Um, so we continue on the front of the engine and for that we can put on the timing chain cover. Um, 
first i'm gonna put some uh liquid sealant all around here so then i can put on uh, the gasket and then i'll put some more on the gasket itself before installing it with the timing chain carbon well prepped it's time to put it on the engine so you can easily press it over the bearing and after that it's time to target all according to spec and when that's all done it's time to put on the rotor with the new bulb and then it will follow it up by the housing But also the rotor now torque to spec, it's time to put back the ignition sensor. So also replace the O-ring on the ignition sensor and after that it's time to put on the front cover. So to complete the front end of the engine, it's time to mount up the exhaust nut. And before doing so, I put just a tiny little bit of copper paste on the inside of the threads. So otherwise there are chances that the nut will get seized on the cylinder head and then you will damage the threads so just put just a tiny little bit of copper paste on it so for the top of the engine nothing really special just place these back and I install the new starter motor and what's now left to do is time to put this cover back on So one of the final pieces to install is the oil sump, so I already degreased it and then it's time to put on some uh, silicone all around and then I'll put on the gasket and then again also seal it up again and then it's time to tighten it in a crossway pattern, 10 meters, let's go. And the last part. So with a little bit of magic the oil filter is now also in. And another last part to install obviously are some new spark plugs. Hurry up, I want to see the end result. So that's it for this video if you made it all the way to the end please leave a thumb up on this video and if you got a question or anything you want to know just put it in the comment section down below and uh, right now I'll add a clip of a BMW R100 engine that I rebuilt for a project that was mine so uh, let's check out how these engines sound.